Internationally, Marx had great scorn for Russians in general and for Russian revolutionaries in particular. His conclusion regarding the Tsarist rule of his day are singularly apt for communist Russia. The policy of Russia is changeless. Its methods, its tactics, its maneuver may change, but the pole star of its policy is world domination is a fixed star. This is what Marx thought about the Russians. Actually, during communist rule, Russia fulfilled few of the Marx ideas and ideals of communism. President Truman of USA remarked in 1950, Russia is not a communist state, nor was Stalin a real communist. There is, for example, it is a dictatorship by few leaders of the Communist Party rather than a true dictatorship of the proletariat. The political state, which according to Marx would soon, soon wither away, became more all powerful with the passage of time. Beginning with Lenin, the communist leaders have found it easier to preach Marx than to practice him. While continuing to pay lip service to Marxian philosophy, communist countries looked out the world, have modified that dogma inherited from Marx as political circumstances and expediency seems to require. Viewing the activities of his disciple, Marx once said, I am not a Marxist. And it appears probably that he would have had strong doubt about the application of his theories in the 20th century. A favorite socialist saying is that if Marx had lived under Stalin, he would have not lived long. Marx's theories of values and surplus value have been invaluable for purpose of communist propaganda and agitation. Economists generally now consider them invalid and discredited. One of the factors that caused rejection of Marx's theory was the increased use of machinery which brought about great variation in the amount of labor needed for such commodities and has created huge wealth without the utilization of any workforce. Freehop, an eminent social scientist pointed out that the chemist will make one discovery with regard to soil fertility and will multiply many folds the productivity of farm laborer. It was the chemist who created the surplus wealth, not the productivity of the workers. In refutation of his theory, another critic suggested that men dive for pearls because they are valuable. Pearls are not valuable because men dive for them. Marx's theory of labor surplus do not acknowledge that science, technology, arts or organization add anything to the values and prices and thus creation of wealth. Economist has never agreed on the method of measuring value despite two centuries of meditating and writing upon the subject. Demand and utility to be the most widely accepted criteria. It is doubtful that any figure in the history has inspired more violently contradictory opinions than Karl Marx did. There is practically no middle ground between the view which holds him to have a diabolically inspired Jew who plotted the downfall of civilization and diametrically oppose picture of him as a lovable saint who selflessly devoted himself 
to the world's disheritant class of 19th century. One bitter critic has stated that in the name of human progress, Marx has probably caused more death, misery and degradation and despair than any man who ever lived. Thomas Patrick Nail has suggested that Marx is the symbolical leader of the have-nots in their struggle against haves.